Thanks for joining us today to learn about Osteoporosis Canada's new recommendations for preventing fracture and long-term care. I'm Dr. Alexandra Papaiwanu from McMaster University. I'm a professor in medicine in the Department of Medicine. As well, I'm a geriatrician at Hamilton Health Sciences and the scientific director of the Jera Center at Hamilton Health Sciences. Osteoporosis Canada's new recommendations for preventing fracture in long-term care will help reduce the risk of fractures in the frail older adult. They contain valuable practical information and strategies to prevent fractures. In order to reduce the injury from both falls and osteoporosis, we really need to integrate these strategies when we're caring for the older resident in long-term care. We expect these recommendations will be useful to long-term care teams, caregivers and residents in long-term care facilities. On behalf of Osteoporosis Canada Scientific Advisory Committee, I'd like to acknowledge our co-authors who are from across Canada and from a variety of health professions. Throughout this presentation, you will learn how to apply the recommendations to frail older adults in long-term care, how to improve fracture risk assessment while identifying those at high risk of fracture, and finally, how to choose from non-pharmacological and pharmacological therapies available, in particular for residents who are at high risk of fracture. How common are fractures in older adults in long-term care? Fracture rates for adults in long-term care is two to four times that of similarly aged adults living in the community. Over one-third of older adults who experience a hip fracture are residents who live in long-term care. Up to 30% of residents who live in long-term care have had a previous spine fracture or a vertebral fracture. What is the impact of fractures? Breaking a hip, particularly in older adults, has a dramatic impact on their lives, reducing independence, mobility, causing pain and death. Similarly, multiple spine or vertebral fractures can be a substantial cause of pain, anxiety, depression, affect pulmonary function, and cause agitation. In women, a hip fracture leads to future fractures. It can lead to long-term care, home admission, decreased quality of life, and an increased risk of death. Nearly half the women living in long-term care who suffer a hip fracture will die within a year, and 10% will have another fracture within a year. Those individuals with hip fractures account for 18% of long-term care admissions. What is the goal of fracture prevention recommendations? The goal of the recommendations is to reduce immobility, pain, transfers to hospital, and in general, improve the quality of living of residents in long-term care homes. The recommendations. There is clear need to provide treatment guidance in the frail elderly and to consider the multimorbidity or multiple medical problems when developing such strategies. It may be difficult to identify residents at high risk of fracture as the current fracture risk assessment tools have not been validated in long-term care, where over 20% of residents may die within one year of admission. These new recommendations integrate falls and osteoporosis assessment, taking into consideration lifespan, renal impairment, and the risk of falls and fractures. These recommendations contain various treatment strategies, including non-pharmacological and pharmacological therapies. How were these recommendations developed? These recommendations were developed using the GRADE approach that was developed at McMaster University and considers the quality of the available evidence, the balance between benefits and harms, the preferences of residents and their care providers, as well as the resources required to implement them. 
For the first time in the development of clinical guidelines and fracture prevention, residents and their caregivers were part of the panel. Quality of life, loss of activities of daily living, mobility, pain, and death, and adverse events requiring medical attention were used as important outcomes during this process. How can the recommendations be interpreted? We assess the quality of the evidence as high, moderate, low, or very low according to the grade criteria. We use the term recommend for strong recommendations and suggest for conditional recommendations. These have different implications for both clinicians and patients and as well as residents. For example, a strong recommendation for a physician means that most residents should receive the intervention. For a resident, it means that they would want the recommended intervention or course of action. For more information about the quality of evidence and confidence in effect, please um, go to the GRADE Working Group website. How do we assess high risk of fracture in long-term care? The recommendations were developed for two important groups, older residents in long-term care at high risk of fracture and older residents not at high risk of fracture. Who is at high risk for fracture? Residents at high risk of fracture based on the 2010 Osteoporosis Canada guidelines include those who have had a prior fracture of the hip or spine or have had more than one prior fracture or have recently used glucocorticoids and have had one prior fracture. In addition, those residents who have been identified as high risk and or are receiving osteoporosis treatment prior to admission. It is important to ask these questions on admission and they're outlined on the slide. It's also very important to highlight that bone mineral density is not required to identify residents at high risk of fractures. If the answer is yes to any of the previous questions, the resident is considered at high risk for fracture. You may be wondering if these recommendations can be applied to frail older adults, not only in long-term care, but also those living in the community. And the answer is yes. There are individuals who are very frail, who live in their home or may be living in a retirement home, who are similar in terms of multiple medical problems and the needs for assistance in activities of daily living similar to those who reside in long-term care. These guidelines contain valuable and practical strategies to prevent fractures, which will be useful for physicians, caregiver, and residents in long-term care. These strategies include appropriate nutrition and calcium and vitamin D supplementation, use of hip protectors, exercise, and interventions to prevent falls, as well as pharmacological therapies to reduce the risk of fracture. What are the recommendations for calcium and vitamin D? Before we go into the recommendations, we need to consider some special issues in long-term care. Over 7 to 40 percent of residents living in long-term care have difficulties with swallowing. You need to think about supplement options including pills that may need to be crushed or mixed with food, liquids or an other route of administration. If you suggest liquids, think about the thickness and mixing with foods. Similarly, fortified foods might help improve the use of vitamin D. For all residents, we recommend dietary interventions to meet the recommended dietary allowance for calcium. For those over 70, the recommended amount is 1200 milligrams per day which is three servings of dairy or dairy equivalents. For residents at high risk who cannot meet the RDA for, for calcium through dietary intake, we recommend daily supplements of calcium up to 500 milligrams a day. For residents who are not at high risk of fractures who cannot meet the RDA for calcium through dietary intake, we suggest daily supplements of calcium up to 500 milligrams a day, depending on resources and their or their caregivers values and preferences. For vitamin D, residents at high risk of fractures 
we recommend daily supplementation of 800 to 2,000 of units of vitamin D3. For residents not at high risk, we suggest daily supplements of 800 to 2,000 units of vitamin D3 depending on resources and their or their caregivers' values and preferences. What are the recommendations for exercise? For residents at high risk of fractures, we suggest balance, strength, and functional training exercises only when part of a multifactorial intervention to prevent falls. This recommendation places a high value on avoiding the small increase in falls which may occur among individuals at high risk of falls who participate in exercises such as balance, strength, and functional training. For residents not at high risk of fracture, we suggest balance, strength, and functional training exercises to prevent falls. This recommendation places a high value on the probably small reduction in falls as falls may lead to serious injuries. It also places a high value on the other benefits that exercise could provide. What are multifactorial interventions and recommendations? Multifactorial interventions are recommendations or any combination of interventions that are tailored to an individual's risk to reduce falls. Such interventions may include medication reviews, the assessment of environmental hazards, use of assistive devices, exercise, management of urinary incontinence, and educational interventions directed to staff. For all residents, we suggest multifactorial interventions that are individually tailored to reduce the risk of falls and fractures. What are the recommendations for the use of hip protectors? For residents who are mobile at high risk of fractures, we recommend hip protectors. For residents who are not at high risk of fractures but are mobile, we suggest hip protectors depending on the resources available and the resident's values and preferences. What are the pharmacological therapy recommendations for older adults at high risk for fracture? We calculated effects of benefits and harms at one year or more and thereafter these recommendations apply to older persons with life expectancy greater than one year. To develop these recommendations, we placed high value on issues that are prevalent among older persons which may make it difficult to safely administer these medications. We also considered immediate risk of fractures and consequences of falls and fractures, for example loss of mobility, greater risk of mortality, and increased pain. For high risk residents, we recommend Alendronate 70 mg weekly residronate 35 mg weekly or 150 mg monthly as first-line therapies. These medications are not to be crushed. They are to be administered in the morning on an empty stomach and only if the resident can remain upright for 30 minutes after administration. Residronate DR, however, can be taken immediately after breakfast and is not required to be taken first thing in the morning or on an empty stomach. Contraindications to alendronate and residronate include avoiding these medications when there is severe renal or kidney issues defined as a creatinine clearance less than 30. For those at high risk of fractures and who cannot swallow or have difficulty taking oral medications, we recommend zoledronic acid and denosumab as first-line therapies. These recommendations apply particularly to residents who have difficulty taking oral medications due to dysphagia, inability to sit up for 30 minutes, and have cognitive impairment and or, and or intolerance. While denosumab can be prescribed to residents with renal impairment, they are at higher risk of developing hypocalcemia. It's recommended that monitoring of the calcium levels and consideration to referral of a specialist be made. Zoledronic acid should not be used in individuals with severe renal impairment. For residents at high risk of fracture, we suggest teriparatide, although the benefits of teriparatide, in particular on vertebral fractures, probably outweigh harms of treatment, the cost of therapy restricts its access, and there may be a higher burden due to the daily injections. For high risk residents, we suggest 
that raloxifene and etidronate not be used. In summary, the goal of these recommendations are to improve the lives of seniors residing in long-term care. First, determine the risk of fracture on admission, asking the questions reviewed previously. Nutrition, calcium and vitamin D supplementation should be considered first. Exercise, hip protectors and interventions to prevent falls and fracture are also recommended. Consider pharmacological therapy for residents at high risk of fracture. For access to the recommendations and other tools and resources, please visit the following websites, Osteoporosis Canada, Canadian Medical Association Journal, and the JARA Centre.